Listen to Abe Thompson for an hour. I'd rather fuck a blood relative. Ladies and gents, we're live on YouTube. It's Friday night. It's half past seven. What is going on? What's going on with y'all? <laughs> um, I, uh, I've been doing. I've been doing. This is before the alcohol has gone into me as well. Oh, I've, been sorry, doing, I've been doing trashy New York accents all day. Get and, out of here! Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why. Like, I think it's like maybe I heard someone on the midterm coverage like earlier in the week with a New York accent and it's sort of like oh. taken root but like it's got from, in you. yeah like from half eight this morning it's been like like I was holding my youngest my two-year-old and I was telling my girlfriend I was like I just gotta I just gotta take a shower I just gotta wash my fucking balls I just gotta <laughs> wash my fucking balls take the baby like and you know my girlfriend's just like oh geez like exhausted just not <laughs> yeah. in the fucking mood for it um, I need to snap it's out of it. Blocky. Yeah. Blocky. Um, ladies and gents, uh, how are we all doing? If it's your first time tuning in, uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Don't be shy. Say hello, either on the live chat on YouTube. We're going live streaming tonight, half past seven. Um, uh, or if you're on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, uh, or indeed Patreon, you can find me on all of them, always at Aid Thompson with an I N on the end. Uh, quick mention of the Patreon, actually, whilst we're on the subject. Uh, I am building a cult. Um, perhaps as the respective Brexit and Trump cults begin to collapse, maybe you're looking for a new one. Have you considered my Binfluencer cult? Because that is what I'm growing on Patreon. Uh, it's just a crack squad team of political satire types who are not looking for inspiring influencer content, but Binfluencer stylings, where we scrape the muck off the bottom of the bin of life and society and say, look at this shit. It is fucking atrocious. Um, no inspiration, no living your best life, just a group wide acceptance that everything is fucked and there is almost nothing we can do about it. So fuck it. Let's try and crack a few gallows humor doom lols out of it. Like, you know, you're fucked. Now sit and drink with me. That's <laughs> that is the vibe of this show and that Patreon community. Uh, I will also say this. This is the last bit of podcast admin um, that if you jump on the Patreon, you get every podcast two ep- uh, sorry, two days ahead of schedule. Uh, before everyone else, you get an RSS feed, which you can plumb straight into your like Apple podcast or I guess Spotify or whatever, um, so that you get those episodes super convenient. Uh, you get access to our Discord channel where we all talk shit about Tories all day, pretty much. Uh, and you get exclusive invites to the live meetups. We just did one in October in uh, Brick Lane where I had tequila for the first time in a long time and felt did incredibly you? unwell. Yeah. Oh, I'm <laughs> gutted I missed that, man. I, I have a full of <laughs> Oh, I was on a bin there. Yeah, I had quite a sore head the next day. Uh, uh, you're a fun drunk. Yeah, what do you think? I hope so. Mm. Um, but yeah, so that was in October. Next one is scheduled for February, the 3rd of February. And I'm going to pop the tickets out to that exclusive on the uh, the Patreon. So if you are interested in that, jump on there now. The cheapest one is just three quid a month, which is really just enough to buy me a beer, which I may or may not consume while recording the show. My guest tonight... Needs no introduction, uh, so I didn't bother writing one. Uh, you know her, I know her, we love her. She is the inimitable, frankly deadly, Super Tansky. Welcome back to the show, Tan. Woo! What up, bitch? What up? <laughs> I'm sorry, I keep calling you bitch. It's like your New York thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's contagious, right? What up, yeah. bitch? Um, bitch? Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. If somebody... Get out of here. If somebody Sorry. calls me bitch, it can't, it's like my self-esteem kicks in. It's like, yeah, that feels about right. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> That's uh, fine. Anyway, enough about me. How are you? How have you been? Yeah, I'm right. As I said, I've, I've actually, like, the thing is, I'm going in dry this week um, because normally, like, I have had, I've actually taken the first time off politics a little bit the last mm. week or two. I don't right. know how long because I had, like, a nasty dose of the Rona um because obviously they're just letting everyone under 50 just you know bare back it um <laughs> so, i've not so, heard it described like that but yeah it's kind of yeah yeah so it caught up with me after nearly three years which i was livid about it was pretty grim yeah. so i had to because my brain just melted like i've not been able to absorb information as well 
Mm. I don't know what it is. I have been kind of tweeting here and there still, but like um, I won't lie to you, the American midterms, the Amer- when I look at graphics of the like American political charts, I'm just baffled. Like I just I'm just like, what the fuck does all this mean? It's not like here where you watch like ministers that are worth millions lose their job in a leisure center at 2 a.m. Yeah. Like <laughs> it's like <laughs> Over there, it's all just like pomp and grandeur and like yeah. go team. Um, and there's like this like nice little semicircle. I go all Philomena Kunk when I try and look at it, so I have no idea what's going on really. I know I know broadly. I know that the, the colours are back to front. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah, like red is bad, blue is good, or, but, or gooder. But yeah, but it's been a bit a bit. Well, that actually it hasn't been at all quiet, has it, on our end? It's been fucking so, chaos this week. Like, it there's has. COP27, Brexit's kicking off, the NHS is in crisis. Like, it feels like there's just... Like, I remember somebody described, I think it was 2016 or 2017, as it felt like the end of the box set series, like series finale, because everything oh, yeah. was just kicking off at once. That's kind of what it feels like now. Is there's like yeah. about eight or nine plates spinning, and each one of them is its own crisis. On fire, yeah. 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 yeah actually you know thinking about it yeah i think it's just because you know the uh the entire economy hasn't tanked this week or this month <laughs> that, that that i'm probably feeling a little bit less um frantic yeah, yeah. sunak's come back in he's just like the rest of them just looks a bit less obviously shit yeah um yeah. but he is still one of them He's uh, just doing the same shit that the rest... Like, every time we get a new Tory prime minister, they start off outside number 10, preaching that sort of, I'm here to help the, the... Basically, the little people. I'm here to stand up for the hard-working blub, like, just about managing working people who want to get on. And, like, it, there's a lot of that stuff. When Theresa May took the helm, when Liz Truss took the helm, brief though it was... Uh, and now again with Rishi Sunak saying he's going to like, we're going to try our best to not leave anyone behind. We're going to, you know, look after people. Like, it's just, I don't believe it anymore. It's like, it's like they're not going to fix that. It's like you caused the problems, you fucking lunatic. It's like, <laughs> oh, we're going to solve all this shit that we caused. It's like, it's like standing in a room full of people that you've murdered going, but we're going to clear the bodies up now. It's fine. Like, you know, and, and but yeah. they can't even fucking manage that. That's the thing. They can't. Like it's you know people are gonna like I think people have lost their their homes and shit and they're just like it's fine we're going to be compassionate it's like what do you mean compassionate like that's yeah. fuck are you talking how like um what's it patronising is that to people we're going to be compassionate towards you little people that keep us where we are fuck off yeah fuck off how far away do you think we are from people saying God. Good old Rishi. I mean, he's he's doing his best, like, like they were with Johnson. Um, I, I, I really don't think that the Tory base, who are rabid racists um, by and large, not maybe not by and large, but well, you don't have to be racist to be Tory, but it helps. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I think that um, they're not going to extend anywhere near the same levels of compassionate because they're xenophobic. Um, some of them are mad xenophobic. Um, it's actually the moderate old school Tories that are a bit more like, oh this has gone a bit bad you know they're the ones oh fuck um i feel like they would they would be forgiving i think of the like economic turbulence if you like but i think it would be short-lived because let's put yourself in the position in the boots of a 73 year old tory voter lives in their paid off mortgage three-bed bungalow out in the shires they're like looking at the Conservative Party going, yeah, you know, it's a rough ride. They've been dealt a rough, they've inherited a rough ride from the previous Tory administration, but we're going to give them a pass. And they'll be forgiving until their son or daughter go, we just lost our fucking house and then have to move back home <laughs> with the grabs and there's noisy kids around. They'll just be like, what the fuck is this shit? Like, and then they'll get angry when it comes knocking on their door. Well, I think a lot of them already are. I mean, this is the thing. You've got loads of people saying, oh, I'm not going to vote Conservative again or I'm going to abstain from voting, mm. which is which is good. Um, yeah. You know, that that is what we want, really, is for them to abstain or to, to move over. Some people are actually going, boom, Tory to Labour, which... And they're, really? They're not, 
yeah like there's been like a lot of a lot of talk of a, a you know people some people switching direct from Tory to Labour which is surprising hence the polls yeah um, but then you just don't know how it's going to go when it gets down to it really you don't know how people will react but I think people just had enough I don't think it's going to be a case of um you know it's going to be a case of how many mm. uh, how big a landslide it will be to Labour, I think, in the next general election, despite them doing their best with the voter ID thing. You know, voter suppression didn't work in America. Like they've become it in America, mm. um, you know. And- Unless they're going to act like literally outlaw voting under the age of 50. I- Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised at what they pull now. But um, like, it's like when you look at the, the list of... Um, I don't know how many of your viewers will be aware of it. I'm sure quite a few will if they follow us will be aware of the, the, the voter ID fiasco. But you look at the list of um, acceptable IDs for people like in their 60s and it's like, you know, freedom bus pass, this bus pass, that bus pass, a, a badly drawn self-portrait. Um, and then you get down to like, <laughs> and then you get down to people that are like young and it's like nothing. Yeah. <laughs> like you're to prove your lineage back to the Tudor period you've got to provide you know a, a letter from your great grandmother um yeah this it's just what I, I don't fucking get man like it's so fucking obvious isn't it it's like it's, they're I... trying to put people off because they like people within that demographic are ferociously less likely to vote Tory but the thing that gets me is like why isn't this a, a huge story why does this I mean I know like what five minutes ago I was saying there's like eight or nine crises all like plate spinning at once so I get that the you know the column inches are like few and far between but this goes to the heart of democracy it's like why would you wish to disenfranchise a whole subset of people like surely the question you should be asking yourself if you're in CCHQ is not how do we stop these young people voting? It should be how do we convince these young people to vote for us? Well, it's easier to not let them, you know, to put barriers in the way of them voting. Mm. It's the it's the old Trump like playbook, isn't it? Um, you look at the way that, you know, there was very little voter fraud there. They just can't be asked to engage. They're just trying to retain power they don't deserve by any means necessary. Mm. And this is arguably one of the easiest ways for them to do it with the, the lit- you know, the smallest possible effort mm. is to is to disenfranchise people in terms of ID because they know there's already quite a, a low turnout. Place barriers in the way of that. And it, it, it's it's going to be even harder. And people just think, you know what, I can't be fucked with it. I'm not going to bother. Mm. I don't know what's going to happen with postal voting yet. Um, I don't know what the deal is with that, but I put out a few links. And I know that uh, the citizen card people uh, with free voter ID um, as the code are giving free ID to okay. uh, people 18 to 64. So I need to plug plug that out there. But no, we're going we're gonna to fight this when I'm back... I'll be making some content on this, but this is, I think a big part of the reason to go back to what you were saying, that they're not showing this in the papers is because they've got no vested interest in, um, you know, showing the Tories what they are. Plus there are, as you say, myriad crises. There's loads of shit that should have made the news uh, Mm. that hasn't. And that's why we desperately need reform. Here's, Here's a weird question for you. Oh God. What would it take for Super Tansky to vote conservative nothing there would literally nothing would ever make really me vote. See, I, that's interesting because it's like i i have no plans to vote conservative at all you better fucking not otherwise <laughs> friendship's been a lie yeah you'll jump on a train from essex all the way over here just to beat the shit out of me yeah but, i would i would i'd turn up but like I, I sort of feel uncomfortable saying, you know, I would never, ever, because, like, what if someone... What well, saying? no, I'm just saying, like, like, hear me out. What if the counterpoint to Boris Johnson became the Conservative leader and ostracised all of the idiots and the self-serving, like, true blue Tories, all of the Etonite Tories, and then started bringing in moderates who were, like, centre, centre-right? That and they... be... Say again? That wouldn't be the Tories, though, would it? No. But the question was, would you vote Conservative rather than, you know, true blue Tories? Fuck no. No. Yeah. 
Yeah, they're they're anti. They're, they're like they go against everything that I stand for morally. They're just they're you know they're the the opposite of progressive. Yeah. They're, they're trying to stick to a rigid ideal of Britain that doesn't that doesn't exist anymore. But I don't think ever existed. Um, it's just things were better hidden, like all the all the the terrible parts of the country. You know, mm. all these things that they. So who was it? Emlyn Pierce, I think it was his name. He did a great TikTok about this, where it's got a kind of standard, beautiful countryside scene mm. with like nature and you know the policeman on his bike and all that kind of stuff. And he's actually, you know, that that policeman actually he took his own life because he was gay, but he couldn't he couldn't say he was. <laughs> you know, yeah. it was like a chocolate box thing of of um and and this is this is the thing. I mean, it it's it it's outdated it's it's a bit like a lot of organized religion it just is not applicable to modern life they're chasing a dream that only the rich ever benefited from essentially i also think it's in, and i forgive me if anyone's listening to this who listened to the solo show the other day but i was talking about how i think there's a strong element of as you get older and we know that conservative voters tend to be older in fact the average age of a conservative voter i read earlier this week was 72 <laughs> fuck it of course it is and i i wondered if like is there an element of that when you get to 70 or 72 that the world has changed a lot and actually you start to feel like more of a spectator than an actual participant in it and and so when you're looking around and there's so much technology and everything feels really impersonal and you're not actively working any longer and things seem like they're moving on without you then when somebody like donald trump stands up and says you know we're going to make america great again we're going to bring it back to the golden era of like the 1950s like it fe that makes sense to you you're like yeah yeah like i missed that that was when i'm i fit in i had a role in society so i can see how that and like the blitz and sort of harking back to these bygone eras might be tempting but the just the sad tragic element of it is that time obviously only goes forward so it's like it's so doomed it's it, it's like very yeah. very sad little technicality in it um that yeah. that's that, that that's how time moves but no I, I get where you're coming from but then there's also this really disturbing element where it's almost as if it's like well i had to suffer so, mm. so do you and it's like from these people that are able to not only own their own homes but have like a second home in spain or whatever but still voted you know still voted leave and then they're like well why the fuck can't i have my house anymore you know um th th these people think that everyone else is snowflakes if they had to suffer in their youth a fraction of what people are having to suffer in their 20s and 30s now mm. fucking hell you know it, it would it, it you know I'm always disappointed at the the, the lack of civil unrest uh, because mm. I think that the circumstances demand it. But they'd have kicked the fuck off if they'd had to have de de dealt with half of what we've had to deal with. Of course, there are some awesome older people out there that would never buck the trend, that would never, ever vote um, conservative mm. and never have. Um <clears throat> but yeah, if you look at the graphs and the demographics, you look at the the wave of blue coming in into the older, and it's just so transparent, as you say, what they're doing. It's so clear that they're trying to appeal to their their target base, just to try and get the ball over the line again. But to be honest with you, I think a lot of people are waking up. I mean, if this, you know, if what has happened in the last two years hasn't woken people up, then they are catatonic. They're gone. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. And, and, but when they when they appeal to these people, they appeal in not just to the base, but the the, the basest instincts of those people with the sort of the race baiting, the oh um, Christ, yeah, going back to the, like historic um, sort of stereotypical attributes of bygone periods. Um, but yeah, I think yeah, yeah, I think I, you can sell that to people when they're relatively okay, like when they're yeah. in their comfortable bungalow and or you know the jobs are going well or, or whatever. But I think now that things are really starting to bite, it's. I mean, we're seeing it with Trump actually over in the US at the moment. Like it's, he's trying to roll out the same shit as as he did in 2016 and 2020. He's trying to do like the nicknames, the rallies, the MAGA stuff. Like, but people 
actually want more than that now because they're getting horrendously bitten by inflation and hiked up gas prices. Mm. It's just not flying in the way that it did. I they're still blaming so Biden a little bit, though, aren't they? Like people here with the whole, um, but why can't we look after our own thing when it comes to refugees? It's like, well, look at your fucking government, dickhead. That's why. The, the government are responsible for, for this shit. They're responsible for processing people's asylum applications. They're responsible for you not having to sell your asshole to pay Eon. They're responsible for keeping these com- companies in check, not giving them massive tax breaks. They're responsible for all of it. Direct your anger at the people responsible for the mm. love of fuck. And only, but, but they're so, because they've got most of the media on their side, it's so easy for them to push the, like with that Just Stop Oil protest recently. Um, and the, was it the Sky News clip of the woman um, that had a really brass eye day to day name, something like oh, Indigo yeah. oh. Rumbelow or something? Yeah, like. yeah, yeah. That is just such. I I, I thought it was a joke at first because I thought like, that's not a fucking name. <laughs> it's not. That's not a name. But um, they're so good at, at at towing the line and and spinning the agenda. And you know when you look at the links between the BBC and the royal family and all, you know the, the, it was like a queen the queen's decree wasn't it that used to. Anyway, it's all fucked, and that's why I'm drinking loads of wine tonight. So um, I'm tempted to start just swigging from the bottle if I'm. <laughs> Yeah, fair. I mean, I have you got have you got straw long enough for a bottle of wine? I'm just ranting. Have you, got, have you got straw for your bottle of wine? Don't don't be fucking ridiculous. I've got a fucking drip, mate. I just I get it <laughs> straight into the vein. This is actually a very tasty little um, Margaret River Sauvignon Blanc. I've actually been to Margaret River. Um, you can't I... beat a uh, Australian Sauv Blanc or French. The only two I drink. I see. I'll I'll take that uh, take that advice next time I'm buying wine, which is never. Uh, Do you drink wine? No, not really. Like I'll have a red wine if I'm having a steak. If I'm feeling Ooh, particularly. Chateau Neuf de Pape. Say again. Go for a Chateau Neuf de Pape or a Cote de Rhone. I like Malbec. Um, I've I've heard I've heard big things about Malbec, but I'm not a red wine drinker, so I stick to what I know, <laughs> which is Cote de Rhone's. And um, yeah, the the Chateau Neuf de Pep. Yeah. From the Ro- the well, Ro- tonight, tonight I'm on Brixton Brewery, uh, who are one of many breweries yeah. I've emailed to try to get to sponsor the show. Haven't heard anything <laughs> back. <laughs> really? Yeah, I'm like, I've, somebody's going to be interested in sponsoring this because it's like the figures are doing okay. Like, I'm quite happy with where things are headed. But um, please sponsor me. I mean, the show in my alcohol is in my pursuits of. <laughs> <laughs> They probably don't want to get like political though, do they? They're like, oh Yeah, they'd be like, Oh, Brixton Brewery's gone woke. But... <laughs> yeah, because Brixton's renowned for being <laughs> right wing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, they've really had such a departure from Brixton's Tory roots. <laughs> um Brick Lane, man. Oh, I miss Brick Lane. I'll just give I a miss... quick uh quick shout out to some of the people in oh, hello. Uh, in the live chat. We've got a few. Um what's up to Sean? What's up to silent? There's somebody called Potato Cabbage, which I am <laughs> locked I into. I love a cool nickname. I love it. Yeah. Uh, hello to Danica. Hello to Simon. Uh, who else have we got? Oh, Josh is in. Hey, Josh. What's going Josh, on? Josh Russell. Yeah. Sarah Banks. Hello. Hello to Ollie. A few, few of the Patreons in here tonight. And John Martin. Hello to John. How are you doing? Oh, uh, John left to the countryside. John left to the countryside is in the oh. chat. If I'd known he was free, I would have got him in. I hope he's okay. John. Little no, John. I'm, Why am I calling him back. little? I, I'm sure we're the same height. Did I say little? No, I did. Oh. I, I called him Little John, which now even feels like Robin <laughs> Hoodie. You don't want to go down the road of no. Little Johns. No. <laughs> anyway, let's get back on point. So... Please. Riddle Jones. Um yeah. Um So another story I saw earlier today was about this Dominic Raab stuff. <laughs> well, I haven't heard this. Come on, surprise me. Which is right, so I've only read it like I've I've skim read it, right? But it sounds as though, and I'm gonna be very careful that I don't put myself in some sort of legal trouble here. So but... you're fine. Is that the rule? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They um, do it on 
what needs to be all the time. But then that guy's always fucking sued. So I yeah. would trust this lot. Anyway, carry okay, on. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to try this. So allegedly he fucked livestock. No, wait. Uh, no. <laughs> right. So he's in, he's in hot water. Uh, because he's being, he's, I think he's being accused of bullying in the workplace. No which... shit, Sherlock. Yeah, does that shock you? Oh, oh yeah, totally shocked. <laughs> I've, I've, I know some, I've heard some very, very shit, like bad, bad, bad shit about Dominic Raab, but I can't say it, obviously, because he'll get me killed, but probably no, the vein considering... will pop out, he'll grab a shovel. Yeah, considering what I know, I'm. Yeah. Uh, surprise me in the least but mind you but this all this bullying stuff mm. it's like i've seen the thick of it uh, you know it 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 just seems like that they they operate like mad people anyway like it's it's i'm surprised that the, the people are starting to actually start calling it bullying yeah. because it's so common like and prevalent from people i've known that have worked there they say that like the thick of it's mild compared to what you know, it's actually really like there. So, I, I, like, I wonder, given his alleged uh, penchant for what's he supposed to have done? I think it's bullying civil servants, and this made me laugh when I read it because it said he, like, in in his defence to some of these allegations, which I'm sure he would refute. <laughs> let's tread very carefully here. Uh, yeah. In in his defence, it was like it, they had sort of quoted him or something saying that he has a very high regard for civil servants. And I was like, what the, f like, does anyone take this shit seriously? Uh, like after the last two years, they've been like, cull the civil service, burn it to the fucking ground. These civil servants, look, they're all at home with their feet up in their jammers. What the fuck are they doing? Get rid of them. They're good for nothing. We hate the civil servants. And then an allegation of bullying comes out. It's like, oh, I hold them in incredibly high regard. <laughs> when I'm not beating them. Yes. Yeah in the corridors like i've got i think there should be some kind of like little um charity set up for like you know how they have the charities for all those people that would oh i'm gonna sound like a cunt saying this on armistice day but uh, too late after, for that but yeah war, they had those nice little bungalows didn't they set up for all the the arms houses oh yeah yeah um i think we're gonna in the future need something like that for like civil servants that have been, like, anyone that works <laughs> in sw1 will like they I'm, I'm not even kidding like dominic Raab is precisely the sort of person who will recategorize working for government or working for the conservative party as like the modern equivalent they'll bring back workhouses like like poor houses and then the, the allegations of bullying will come out like he bullied me they'll be like it's it's written in your fucking contract i get to beat the shit out of you yeah uh, seven beatings per week minimum yeah um must take barrages of abuse yeah um, I mean, yeah, it's it's. Um, I'm, I'm just surprised that they're actually starting to take bullying seriously because I think bullying is, as you say, probably in the job description. Dominic Raab being a bully, what a shocker! I mean, mm. the guy's a walking red flag. Um, Williamson is is it's it's so funny because you can tell that guy thinks he's hard, like he thinks he's like. You, there, there's there was that kind of recording of him, wasn't there? Like. Where he, he you can tell that he just thinks he's the daddy, but he looks like Frank Spencer, yeah. and he's just so like meek, and oh, it is it is just hilarious. He just thinks he's the daddy, but uh, this is the thing, like <laughs> the tarantula. Yeah, <laughs> the defences that someone put out was like, but the spider never bit anyone. Yeah, in in my defence, and it never bit anyone. Like nobody's saying that it did. You fucking yeah. idiot. We're laughing at you for having a... Like, he's not even... It's like you say, like, how is he scary? He's a sort of Frank Spencer meets Ted Bundy kind of looking dude. And... But, Ted like, if Bundy. if you were scared of him, like, who the fuck is scared of of him? Like, it's it doesn't compute. So then I think maybe he goes and buys a tarantula because he knows he's not particularly like, physically threatening. But he's like a child's <laughs> idea of a threatening person. He had to have his ritual. He had to have a thing. You know, like the old um, Bond villains have their cat. Yeah. <laughs> and then he's just there striking at them. <laughs> like, this is... Here's how that sort of, you know, that bullying thing with the tarantula. Here's how that should have gone, right? Somebody... He's, he, like, buzzes them. He's like, yeah, could you come into my office, please? And then, the, you know, this PA comes in and he goes... Sits back with his tarantula. And she's <laughs> like, yeah? And he's like... <laughs> I've been meaning to talk to you about your performance. And she's like, uh, right. What's, I mean, what's, what's, 
what's oh, i can't fucking take this anymore why have you got a tarantula like it should just be like cock condemnation just i i pity you this is fucking weird and cringy like why have you got a tarantula just thought it'd be something i could have and i could stroke put fear into people you know the guy with the the guy with the spider like how do, you, how do they not have the self-awareness to know that at the Christmas party, all the civil servants are going to be talking and go like, did you, did you, did I tell you about the time he's brought his tarantula in? Oh my God. He's such a loser. Like, it's like uh, the office, get the guitar. Yes. Um, <laughs> oh, what a twat. Honestly, these people are the people that are in charge of our fucking laws. This is the thing. These are the people. Oh, uh, give me five million, like five, five million. Give me five million, but also give me five minutes in a room with Rob or or um, Williamson. Or I, I, I love five minutes. I would ruin their lives quietly. Yeah. I mean, I think that's. That's the thing with them is it's like a, a huge amount of insecurity, isn't it? It's like, yes. I'm, I have to be mean and dark <laughs> and Machiavellian to cover up for the huge <laughs> gaping chasm of self and self-loathing and identity. And but it There's doesn't fly. There beneath the surface. So they have to have these, you know, Rob's got his, got his bane. Yeah. Williams has got his spider. <laughs> Mog's got his penny farthing. You know, yeah. they've got these rituals and props to, you know. Has anyone marketed this shit yet? Like, like you know, when at the height of the anti-Semitism stuff, people were like, well, look, there's been four or five MPs over here who have said problematic things. And so then there was like, question, like does Labour have an anti-Semitism problem? And now I'm thinking like, Pretty Patel, Dominic Raab, Gavin Williamson... Even fucking Reese, like we're laughing about Gavin Williamson. Reese Mogg was in like the corridors of the Houses of Parliament on the uh, what was that vote the other week? It was the vote about fracking, which Labour painted them into a corner with, where essentially, like Labour tried to get them to to repeal it, yeah, to to go against it, um, and they like if if they hadn't had trust in charge and they'd had a competent functioning system they wouldn't have fallen into that open goal set by labor mm. where they vote with labor essentially or they um fuck off their constituents and go against their manifesto pledge of banning fracking so That's and then you, uh, but as you were saying yeah there was... yeah so like well reese mogg was just in the like the corridors apparently like <laughs> manhandling well like how low does your self-esteem have to be that you go oh i better do what jacob says because or i'll be for it like Everyone Fuck. knows ghosts can't hurt you. Like yeah. everyone, everyone knows ghosts can't hurt you. So, like, what was he doing? Like poltergeisting them about, like making the drawers come out. Like the the guy is like, I don't know, a posh Jarvis Cocker in person. <laughs> He's like twiggy, he is, yeah, like yeah. Slender Man. He is know. a sort of Victorian Jarvis. Like, there's an element of that to him for yeah. sure. It's like if you don't vote the way I want you to, I'll haunt you. <laughs> Great. Or All setting right. yourself up for a haunting, mate. That's yeah. what you're doing. Vote right. this way. Mog, Mog, why um, don't you get the fuck out of here before I show you some penicillin? That'll really freak you out. <laughs> got knob rot? Well, yeah. I've got keys to the penicillin, dickhead. Mm. Well, th that's that's probably how... Uh, <laughs> can you imagine Johnson wouldn't have survived in the olden days, would he? Because he's, he's, he's penchant for knobbing everything. He'd have... Uh, oh, he'd be riddled. Yeah, for sure. Riddled, mate. He'd have died from the pox. Yeah. Wait, can you catch, what, smallpox from shagging? Didn't they call, like, something, like, one of the versions of the... I don't know why I'm pointing at my own vagina. <laughs> <laughs> they used to call my fanny. Um, no, they, no, they used to call... <laughs> Good cell phone or... Yeah. They, I don't know. I'm I, distracted. I, I think, didn't they call this... They call my... Uh, yeah. No, I can't remember what they said. <laughs> this is why I don't normally have a, a a wine anymore. But I thought, fuck it, we're going rogue tonight, Aid. It's yeah, fair. At least how 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 many have you had? How many beers have you had? I've got. I've just had my first one. This is my second now because it's God, Friday. Careful. It's gonna turn into that like Mark Corrigan um, drinking <laughs> episode. Just well, I don't know if I'll get that. I mean, like, I had a few beers last night on a work thing, and I woke up this morning feeling not too smart. 
just feeling like and I felt really bad because like so I I think I had about six beers in this video game bar in Old Street. When was this? Last night. Oh, oh last night. Last night. Oh uh, yes, Tuesday night is your night for party. For it's my London night, and uh, I got I was pretty I was like obviously uh, well refreshed when I left the bar, and then I got a beer for the train home. And then I walked in the front room and my exhausted girlfriend was like, you know, laying down on the sofa, just sort of, you know, looking tired. And she'd been oh. looking after the kids all night. And then I came in, <laughs> just fucking like steaming, talking utter shit, just drunken nonsense for about like <laughs> 10 minutes at this silent, <clears throat> exhausted girlfriend. And she just sat and listened to it. And then oh. we went to bed. And then this morning she woke up and she made me a coffee. She was like, I thought you might like this. I was like, oh, this is love. This is what nice. A gem. Yeah. You give me your girlfriend's number. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. know, I'm not strictly gay. Um, but for that so, kind of But, you know, I'd, I'd make an exception. Yeah. As time goes on, the more I think that I'd like a wife. But, you know, I, I don't think I'm gay enough. Do you think? Sad story. Yeah, you can't see yourself switching that way, no? Not fully, no. I don't think so. Not unless you know, Villanelle, Jody. If Jamie, if Jody Comer called me up, then yeah, I'd make the, I'd make the switch. Yeah, I mean, it's like voting Tories, right? I mean, never say never, surely. Right? Fuck off, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Big eyes. Are you gonna <laughs> say? Up. Are you trying to like <laughs> Just, by the end of this episode, we're both gonna be hammered and we'll both be like, and that's why we say vote Tory 2023. Um Make Britain chitter. Yeah. Again. Well that was um, my tagline for my last I was like, vote me, make me conservative leader because things can still be shitter. <laughs> things can only get shitter. Yeah. Oh man, have you watched The Crown, by the way? Because I've, I've I watched I binged it, but I, it ended like really abruptly. Um, the series I felt ended like really abruptly. This is the it... new one, right? Because I'm missing out on this. Like, so <clears throat> the 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 deal is, I can go out on Thursday night and catch up with friends or whatever, and I can come in here and do the podcast, and that's great. But I do get box set cheated on. Oh shit! Where like she'll go ahead of what you've been watching. So Do you she's... guys watch? Well, that's fair enough, though, isn't it? Yeah, I've got no leg to stand. Like I can't say, oh, don't don't watch that without me, because it's like I'm off, you know, doing my own thing. But yeah, she's two episodes in ahead of me. I haven't got really to to catch up with it <laughs> at all. Is it good? I, uh, it very yeah. It was well, interesting. Um, they've they've caught up on the whole Bashir thing. Okay. Um, how like. The, the skullduggery that Bashir, the, the lengths he went to to get her to do that, which really messed with her head, telling her that the, the, an already paranoid woman, the MI6 and MI5 were like tapping her, even to the extent of, and this isn't like, I know a lot of what's on the crown is um, kind of, it's like a, it's, they should be a bit more clear about how it's not really true. Yeah. Um, a lot of it is kind of like enhanced. But no, Bashir did go well beyond the lengths that he should have. And uh, yeah, it's, you know, I'm I'm like a staunch Republican. Like the Queen dying made me even more anti-monarchy than I was before. Mm. Like I, I was always like, this is fucked. This is like a, a base, like their their status relies upon us being lesser lesser humans in the eyes of society. But um, it's it's so well shot. Mm. and so well put together and the they don't shy away from showing the monstrous aspects if it was a lovey-dovey love letter to the royal family i wouldn't tune in but it's actually it does quite a good job of highlighting some of the dark stuff like you know the nazism mm. uh, putting the disabled sisters in institutions and, and such but the depiction of diana is extraordinary although they have cast johnny lee miller as john major which has made me feel things i never expected to feel wow. for john major yeah and um is it dominic west as um charles which is like getting brad pitt to play prince charles it's just like <laughs> that guy's gorgeous it just doesn't work um but apart from that the, the, you know the rest of the casting's all right but it's, it's a weird series i have to say but yeah. um it's 
Blair has literally just got in the last few episodes just got into power. So it's okay. all like things can only get better vibes. Who's playing him? I don't know, but it's the voice is good, but physically he doesn't really Okay. So it's it's really disorientating because you've got a really hot John Major. Like <laughs> <laughs> Johnny Lee Miller is broadly very attractive. <clears throat> giving way to a kind of much taller I don't know. I don't know who the guy is that's playing Tony Blair. The voice is down to a T. So. Yeah. I voice find, is brilliant. Like it's sort of to me, it's distracting when they cast someone that's a bit too good looking for the role, like for a real life role. I'm a bit like, but that person wasn't that good looking. And I, I understand the argument that people want to watch TV shows with beautiful people in. That's just a, a fact. Uh, people are more likely to continue watching someone if they are aesthetically pleasing. I get that. But I think when it's a real life thing, it's like, is it necessary for John Major's actor to be attractive, or for indeed every actor to be attractive? I say like, <clears throat> it didn't. It, I wasn't mad about it, um, but yeah. <laughs> it was it was distracting. Um, but the thing is, with them, the casting has been so good in the past. Like it has been pretty kind of close to the knuckle. I mean, no one would have thought. Like there were people saying to me, "Now you know how I feel when Gillian Anderson played uh, Thatcher," but she was brilliant as Thatcher. Um, Olivia Coleman was brilliant as the Queen. This yeah. series, it's kind of lost its way a bit. It's all gone a bit. It's just got a bit weird. Um, yeah. But then the royal family are really fucking weird. So I think it's it's difficult, isn't it? Because it's become such an iconic series that to continue to live up to that. This was mm. one of the arguments that I think Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant had with like when they decided to just shut down the office after two seasons. They were like, no, look, if you continue to do these things, they just wither out and die. You can never live up to it. And and I wonder. Like that's that's my... sorry. No, sorry, you go. I was going to say that's different though because that's like a, a fictional thing. Mm. And the but the good thing about the British with comedy series is that they know when to stop it before it just it just drags on. Like I'll never and if John if John left the countryside still here, I know he'll massively disagree with this. But I never watched as a purist. I never watched the U.S. Office. Mm. Uh, the problem with American adaptations, I find of British shows is that they they fuck with it too much they keep it going they just keep it going until it gets boring um until it's just like a ghost series that and you know the ultimate moment in the office with that ending was when brent had uh demonstrated that that self-awareness in the christmas episode to the point where he told finchy to fuck off that was the death of brent because brent always just laughed it off there was always that facade but it you know, there was the reality came through from Brent. So, uh, but but Stephen Merchant was always the the brains of the operation. I think Gervais is a bit of a twat, really. But um... it's an interesting one, isn't it, between those two? Because they were very very successful, like writing partners, and they mm. worked on The Office, and then they did Extras, and I think they were still doing. Was it Extras? Was brilliant. Yeah, but they did like Life Life's Too Short together as well, did they? I didn't watch that. <clears throat> no, I didn't. But they like they were still writing together at that point, and then something happened. There's some there's some story there. I just fucking I know. Theory. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. There's there's been talk of the fact that not the fact. There's been talk of um, Gervais poaching loads of the shared material from their kind of because they were like the ultimate first podcast, weren't they? With the animation. What was it called? The um, the some was it called the Ricky Gervais show or something like that? The yeah, um, way back in the day. Yeah, with the animation and and the podcast between the three of them. Now, there's been a lot of kind of talk of P Pilkington and Merchant being pissed off about the fact that Gervais stole loads of material from that for his stand-ups, which I think he did actually. Right. Um, or appropriated it or you know took their jokes and made it into his, his own thing which i wouldn't put past him I, I i can't help but think he's a bit of a dick gervais he does um, sort of emanate a a, a a sort of pungent twantery to him twatish yeah it just there's a scent isn't there like the scent of a twat like <laughs> yeah i just get sort of slight it's like when you meet somebody new in the office and they're like oh yeah this is like marcus and you go like oh hi, hey marcus how you doing 
And within five minutes, your internal monologue is like, this guy is a twat. I can just tell. <laughs> you can. Yeah, you can tell. I mean, he is massively egotistical and um, you don't get a lot of modesty from him. I mean, he's undoubtedly funny, but I think his solo series have been terrible. There was that amazing. I felt almost bad for him when Stuart Lee. Oh, there was yeah. that, wasn't there with Stuart Lee where Stuart Lee. <laughs> Like, oh, wow. Really? You were. <laughs> How about that shit? <laughs> <laughs> Anyone that's tuned into this thinking, like, oh, yeah, we'll get some political commentary from Super Tansky and A. Thompson. Oh, I can't wait for this. They're going to they're gonna rip the Tories apart. And we've gone way off on a tangent. Like, let's talk about the Crown and Gervais. Oh, well, there's a fucking belch. What the fuck is this? What? <laughs> What you <laughs> Sorry. What you guys don't know is a couple of months about about a month or so ago, we're in the group chat. We I'm in a political group chat with Aid. And he was talking about some I don't, no offense, Aid, <laughs> some bollocks. Yeah. <laughs> in the middle of it, I just heard this wow. <laughs> <laughs> Like it had fucking, you could have sampled that straight into a tune. Yeah. And I, I cried to laugh. <laughs> and I, I, I recorded it and I shortened it. <laughs> wow. And, and you just repeated it. So that's why I've reacted that way. But yeah, that was fucking uh, hell aid. That came from the heart. Just for you. Come from the diaphragm. It came from like deep down in your guts. Yes, somewhere around this region. I'm not talking about Ricky Gervais because the guy's a bit of a prick. Like, I'm, I don't know. I didn't even want to finish that point. I don't. I can't remember the point I was making. I'm let's pissed. Talk, let, let, let's stay a little bit on comedy for a second because I feel like so we oh, both that's... of us produce a lot of political content and a lot of it is obviously very politicsy. But it's also like the other layer that sometimes gets forgotten is the actual craft of writing the comedy stuff. So. We're agreeing that Gervais has a level of twantery to him. Who do you, who's in your, who, who's your go-to stand-up at the moment? Or your go-to sitcom? Like, favourite comedians? Yeah, like, uh, who's funny to you right now? Of all, well, right now, it, it's a hard shout, because I tend to look to a bit further back for, the icons for me were people like Rick Mail and Aid Edmondson, Bottom, mm. Um, Vic and Bob, love Vic and Bob. Stuart Lee, I will try to get tickets to see Stuart Lee. Really loved Tim Key, like Tim Key's hilarious live, like brilliant. Mm. Um, quite enjoyed seeing Doc Brown live. Um, great. Yeah, he was he was actually really good. But Tim Key was another level. I was like in tears watching Tim Key. Um, his poems like just just had me in bits. Um, but no, like I've been rewatching a lot of the old Chris Morris, Armando Inucci stuff, like the Armando Inucci show, um, the day to day, Brass Eye, iconic. We need stuff like that to come back. But a lot of those people have given up because it's just too mad to keep up with, which I can understand. Because coming back to what you were saying about writing, I don't tend to write my videos, by the way. I just freestyle. I'll write some notes about what's going on mm. and then just fucking just just do it um but yeah i was i can't forgot what i was gonna fucking say it's interesting <laughs> like it's I ask you about um satire um being d dead uh, yeah I mean, do you think there's anything that we can do because the problem is by the time we go to write something or say something it's out of date like yeah. within and a day within an hour especially when you do like one of the reasons I've so I've tried to do a few episodes recently where they're not like you know time boxed, time stamped. It's about oh, something, that's, yeah, like quite generic. Um, and I'll try and sort of find the funny in that, but loosely root it back in politics if I can. Um, because would otherwise, you stand yeah, up it's... politics. Would you like you you've you've said that you you kind of shy away more from political stand-up I, mean, I can vouch for having seen your stand-up it was fucking brilliant and i'm not just saying that to butter your ass you were good um but that's very it's kind but it's, yeah, it's well the thing is about like political comedy is it's like a 
when when you're talking stand up to me it's just a different genre it's like a it's like metallica versus tupac it's it's like <laughs> yeah. ben elton who is like the goat i guess of british yeah. political yeah. stand up uh versus you know like a lady henry who would you know do a joke about his mum or his like upbringing or they're just mm. completely different styles of stand up to me and i feel like i can do stuff about like you know drugs or drinking or you know being a dad or like everyday things not not that i'm taking drugs and, and being a dad every day but like um, uh, shooting up and looking after your kid yeah yeah, yeah. my social services <laughs> oh <laughs> don't exist anymore oh okay cool no worries yeah oh that's whew. safe then um <laughs> but but yeah i don't know i just i don't I don't know if I've got, if I would feel confident doing like political stand up. I almost feel like it's beyond me and there's just people who would be way better at it. I don't know. That's the only, like, if I was ever going to do it, that's the only thing I'd do. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, I can't see anything else. Um, because you know what? I'm not like, <clears throat> I'm not necessarily opposed to, to observational humor. Some people do it very well. People like Peter Kay um mickey flanagan yeah. you know what I, I do think they're good at what they do like i do but um i i just think that we need to go a bit deeper with it but it is hard to do i guess satire in a i mean you'd know more about it i've never even tried i mean the first time i think i'll try is when we do our gig thing which we Ooh. still need to <laughs> yes actually that's a, a reasonable moment to plug it i suppose so well i don't even really fully know like how are we going to do this yet so please enlighten me so i can explain this to you whilst i simul simultaneously plug well, that's um, good i mean i'm all is <laughs> Still <so sorry. laughs> I, went, I was like has she did she forget her sentence or is she okay good um so here's the plan right so on friday the 3rd of february uh myself tan uh i have I, I feel a bit weird publishing his name yet because he hasn't 100 percent confirmed that he can definitely be involved but there is another I, I will say major political influencer uh not really? that i would i would put myself in that bracket but like somebody who doesn't necessarily fuck with twitter and tiktok so much but they are very active on instagram and very popular indeed oh i think i know who you're talking about uh, you probably you almost certainly do uh, i fucking do so uh so there's the three of us um, and I'm thinking I'll do a little bit of stand up to begin with um, and then I'll sort of retreat back and it will be like a live version of the podcast. Um, and I might get one other person also involved. So it's like we've got a nice, healthy kind of like little panel. We'll have some laughs, might play some games uh, and then we'll take some questions and stuff from the audience. And yeah, I think it should be a good time. Be about sort of two, two hours long, maybe a sort of after party meet and greety type thing. But that's the plan. There'll be about 50 tickets going up. So I anticipate they'll probably go pretty quick. Um, so if if people are listening or watching and they are interested in getting involved in that, uh, then definitely follow Tan. Definitely follow myself. Uh, we're going to be publishing more information soon. How does that sound to you, Tan? Does that... Are you on board with that? Good. Like I was supposed to get back to you, but I had a bit of a uh, couple of days. So I've been a bit shit on my messages. But no, that sounds grand, actually. Yeah. Because I thought about the extra edition too. I didn't see that coming. Yeah, man. Well, I want to yep. get. I want to make it like because. Well, I certainly, but I'm guessing we like can we can't really do this sort of thing like every week or even every two weeks. Like it takes a lot of organisation to do them. So I feel like if we, you know, we push one back past Christmas because you know January is going to be a write off for most people. Then February you get paid again. I think we just do. Just off payday. Yeah, that night make it worth people's while get a couple of like two three four guests down trade bounce off each other thinking and... less square basement or another venue maybe i'm um, looking at somewhere in white city at the moment i was about to say like white city like white city i don't know where white. that came from white. white um cool whip um well no i mean where where the fuck's white city oh um sort of paddington way like out west london way <laughs> Down Paddington, down old Paddington way. Um, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I like the idea of a panel. Um, we'll need to talk about this when we're not... Uh, when we're not rolling. <laughs> yeah. 
when we're not rolling. But no, I'm a hundred percent in it, it, up up for that. But it's quite a small capacity, isn't it? Fifty. Well, we could look at a bigger place. I'm just sort of thinking. I reckon we could. Yeah, I reckon. Do you we think could we could probably... sell out something bigger? Yeah, I reckon we could. Should we try and? Yeah, fuck it. Okay, let's try. Let's let's do it. You heard it here first, people. <laughs> and, then, and then we'll look out at like Wembley Arena. Rooms of empty seats. Ah! <laughs> it's probably best to go like lower at, at first, isn't it? Like just to just to test the waters, and then yeah. if the first one goes well, I'm thinking like probably about I don't I can't imagine like a I'm terrible with numbers, so I can't imagine what fifty looks like. Fifty is like a pub function room. But it needs to be like a sort of mini venue, like a little theatre-y type thing, I think. Because I don't, I don't yeah. want to just do it in a pub function room. That feels a bit shit. No, you do not. And also, I would love to do a bit of karaoke afterwards. Oh, the plot thickens. Well, up for doing karaoke. I'm terrible at singing. But that's but kind I... of that's what karaoke's for, isn't it? You know. You, yeah, I mean, I can imagine you busting out a bit of Gangsters Paradise on the old. Uh... How weird. I was just thinking about Gangster's Paradise. I was like, that is, that's a go-to karaoke classic because you don't have to it's sing, not... really. It's a lot of rapping. Yeah. Yeah, good old Coolio, Kud- 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 God rest his soul. What's, so... your, what's your karaoke go-to? Um, <clears throat> Truth Hurts by Lizzo. Don't know it. Should I know it? Yeah, you should know it because it's one of the best songs ever. Um, <laughs> Boys by Lizzo. Or Juice by Lizzo. Um, Who the fuck is Lizzo? I don't even know the artist. The fuck is... How very dare you? Right, I'm going to Google. Here's, this is my yeah, research for this show. Or Bohemian Rhapsody. Or um, If I'm Feeling Brave, Paranoid Android by Radiohead. Everyone's favourite karaoke classic. Just up there with Leonard Cohen. <laughs> 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 it's a real uplifting like, I can imagine it like so you do those two and then you'd be like do you know what guys I'm going to do one more oh by myself <laughs> Let audience it karaoke classics yeah Suzanne or like he's like fucking Leonard Cohen it was like he created songs that were like T.S. Eliot poems that just fucking go on forever yeah <laughs> like war and peace I would do um, a Guns N' Roses number now I think uh, Sweet Child of Mine that's a that's a karaoke one right um but the problem is with karaoke is you have to book it like way in advance and you have to have like i've, I've tried to book karaoke um before it's th- there's not that many places that do it in east london it's like soho there's a couple in brick lane yeah lucky voice and mama shelter i think in brick lane and um yeah sorry my <laughs> my um fitbit I'm taking it off because I don't want it to know about the wine, and I think it will know somehow. It's like fit pit come yeah. sort of breathalyzer thing. <laughs> it will know. I know it was. I don't know how it will know, but it will know. Um, but yeah, you have to book like way in advance. But um, I feel so bad for people that have tuned in tonight, expecting us to um, like talk about politics when we have like just rambled about comedy, <laughs> um, plugged and like made plans on a live for our own night yeah and then just talked about about karaoke you have you're you're so much more sensitive and sort of in tune with people's feelings than i am i'm sort of like yeah this is the podcast it's a bit weird it's a bit we've gone off on a tangent it's okay there must be something meaty we can get into though oh okay let's have a i'll have a quick look at the news headlines and then we'll we'll rip something apart let's do it news it but i'm really excited about our night by the way guys come It'll be very useful. Yeah, I think it'd be good fun, man. Um, right, here we go. Biden apologises for US pulling out of the Paris Climate Agreement. Oh, fuck them, guys. Like, I can't... I can't the UK is bad enough without getting involved with America, an old ghosty Joe. Like, next, British. Let's go British. Okay. Uh, Let's take a wee look. Do you know what? There's a lot of American news on here. Do you go Scottish? Let's this take a wee look. What is take a wee look? It's better than my New York accent. Scottish. Yeah. I can't, I can't, I can't do any accents. You know me. I don't know. You, you do a pretty mean Essex one. Fuck off, you can. <laughs> um, 
Come, let's think about let's let's think oh no hang on a minute i've got one uh the met are refusing to prosecute sean bailey who was pictured with about 20 people at a catered fucking party oh yeah and hasn't he been put forward for a lordship i think so yeah fuckers now Honestly. this is interesting because he so the the right leaning newspapers obviously went all in on Keir Starmer, the curry, the beer gate stuff. They would not let that shit rest. And yet <laughs> now we've got Sean Bailey pictured at what I assume is an illegal gathering in the middle of lockdown. Is that am I am I talking yeah, out my ass there? Peak peak lockdown. Yeah, catered for fuck's sake. There was like catering stuff on the table someone sprawled out like paint me like one of your french girls style at the at the base yeah and loads of people all like huddled round, like cheek to cheek oh. it, was, it was it was it was fucking bad have, like have the met given a reason why they're not going to oh, I, I don't know like they're getting noshed off by sunak like the usual like it's it's one law for them Another law for the rest of us, isn't it? I mean, that's been proven. They didn't even investigate most of the the gatherings that happened during lockdown. Johnson was let off massively. You can see why they want the job, can't you? You can see why they want to get into this position because it is just total removal of accountability mm. and capability and the ability to be... Does the Met claim that they're, oh, we don't want to get involved in political stuff? It's like, well, what if, what if they... What if they killed a load of people? Oh, oh fuck, they did, didn't they? Um, okay, <laughs> scrap. Um, yeah. I mean, it's it's, it's, it's just dark. It's dark. not always been this bad, though, which makes me think, did they get into politics because they want to be untouchable? Like, judiciarily speaking? I'm sure that's not a word, but it is now. Um, or is it that they are allured by the power and the influence aspect and now that they've got the power and the influence they are now able to exercise some control <laughs> over the met and say guess what you're not prosecuting us like talking all of it like this you know they it's just weird machiavelli and like i i just think that it's very attractive to, to, to those, I mean, if you look at the, the roots and you look at the revolving door that comes out of the most prestigious um, kind of private schools in the country straight into government, these people are coming from a, a, a place of in, immense entitlement anyway. Mm. Um, and then you put them into a position of immense power and influence. And if you look at the kind of, you know, even the surface stuff that we see about the kind of like attitudes that these people have towards what they see as lesser yeah. people, civil servants, and they will see the police as that too. Um, and then you'll think about people that are kind of given like even greater levels of power, like being in the House of Lords, purely because they know where the bodies are hidden. Mm. Um, and then you look at the kind of people that are made commissioner and it, it is just a fucking mess. The entire place just needs burning down and rebuilding. Um, and, and, you know, the institutions aren't working for us. They, they, they've never even been designed to work for us, I don't think, from the onset. Oh, hello, there's a police helicopter out. Oh. Oh, I wonder if... You've spoken too much truth to power. They've <laughs> tracked you down. No, it's, it's probably more likely the fact that there's like a horrific, horrific crime level round here. Um, and they're probably looking for another killer or rapist or stabber. Well, that's all we have time for tonight from the Essex Tourist Board. Um... No, the people like the, the houses out the back in the last two months, I've seen people stretch it out after massive beatings. Really? Uh, yeah. like uh, Someone take... Grab is in town, is he? Or? I'm just surprised they managed to get a fucking ambulance. Like, yeah. you know, it's, it's impossible to get an ambulance. I mean, this is where we are at the moment in Britain. There's no fucking ambulances. There's no, you know, even if you do manage to get one, you will likely, if you're seriously, you'll die in the back of one outside a hospital before you'd even see a bed. Um, you've got people lying on the floor for, for eight hours at a time. Got an NHS in crisis. Big up the strikers. Um, you know, the police are in bed with the government. It's just like, it's never been this bad. I mean, things literally can only get better, but yeah. will they? 
it's it's weird isn't it because so obviously i had dr patterson on a few weeks ago i and, love her yeah she's great she really is and um uh she was saying oh think things are going to get hellish like this winter and she was like this was in i think september or maybe even late o august she was like i'm ringing the bell now and we can see how bad things are going to get but i can guarantee like somebody will phone from lbc or you know wherever and they will want a quote and they'll They'll say, you know, is there anything that we could have done to avoid have avoided this new crisis, this new winter, like complete absence of beds, overrun hospitals, absence of ambulances? Is there anything that we could have done? And she was like, and yeah, like, you know, right now we could do stuff. But by the time they actually get round to it, probably not. Oh, it makes me so angry, eh? Like, I can't even express. And it's not just the disrespect of the public that pay for this, that, that have paid into the pot for years. It's not just the fact that my own nan was left on a on a floor for eight hours. It's it's the way that these people that, that gave their lives in plastic fucking bags to save us are being treated. Um, you know, it pisses me off with the rail people too of course of course it does um solidarity with those strikers too but the nhs it's it, it it hits home because those nurses are the people that when i was weeping being put under for an operation held my hand and looked after me and they do so when they are paid nothing and they do so when they are treated with barely any respect and i will go out there and join them you know you know i'd I would happily go out there and, and join them. I'm actually going to take cakes to my local picket line um, to and tea to, 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 to look after them and keep them out there because they would not do this lightly. And in their mm. history, they haven't ever gone on strike before. Um, and those people deserve the world mm. and they are treated like scum. And enough is enough, you know. Um, we're well, supposed to quote a popular movement yeah um, but it's true and yeah, enough is enough and sadly the only thing that's ever going to change anything is if we all kind of find our balls and get out there and smash it up it's like that quote i will now butcher no doubt but i can't remember who it comes from but it's like the is it like a riot or a protest is the language of the unheard Riot is the language of the unheard yeah, yeah. it's martin luther king isn't it is it? Oh, well, there we go. I'm showing myself as completely ignorant. But I knew, I knew it came from somewhere. I knew it, it was too clever that I had thought it up myself. I think it's. I fucking <laughs> hope it is now. I really hope it is now. Have we, yeah, uh, we don't want to miss it. Miss attribute Graham, it. By the way, said um, check the comments, but I don't know why he's saying that. I don't know if it's because he's called us a massive bunch of wankers. It is indeed Martin Luther King, by the way. Let's quickly oh, check the comments. Hold on two secs. Dominic Raab has been accused of hurling tomatoes from a pret salad across a room in the Ministry of Justice during a fit of rage. Fair play. I'm getting Clarkson vibes from that. Uh, Fuck. Fucking hell. Like, is that all he's got? Like, fucking <laughs> mega mind. <laughs> Uh, and then he said, Jesus, what's that noise? I assume that was a helicopter that uh, that Graham was um, uh, uh, responding to there. That, I'm sorry, man. I can't help the fact that I live in a town that's like renamed Stabchester. Yeah. Because... You sound like you're in like South Central LA or something, you know? Mate, honestly, that helicopter always goes over on the nights when I'm home alone as well. And I'm lying in bed with like a fucking knife under my pillow going, please not tonight. <laughs> but I <laughs> to kill again please not tonight but no it's it's like it's out all the time looking for the killers you know looking for the stabbers looking for the you know drug dealers yeah they're all at my house though and we're having a fucking brilliant time <laughs> <laughs> um, they're not really i wish jesus um tan we've run out of time i hate to cut you off here but uh we've been talking for an hour man and uh I'm it's best because this is an uncharacteristically pissed version of me yeah on your podcast i'm feeding I'm it oh no I'm, I'm i'm happy yeah good good well i've had a good time thank you so much for joining me thank um, you yeah it's been good i always good. enjoy catching up with you um, yeah i can see the lies in your eyes Aid. no no not at all um i uh that's that's my eyes are bloodshot i was hung over today that's that's what that is um so Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I will be back next Wednesday with another solo show. 
Uh, I do two shows a week if you're new to catching up with the podcast. Uh, a Wednesday solo one and then a Friday night one with a guest. Um, I did mention earlier on uh, in the first sort of minute or so of the uh, the podcast that I do run a Patreon. If you'd like to support the show, if you're enjoying one, two, three, four episodes of it and you would like to get involved, uh, I am building a cult, a community online. The Binfluencer Cult on patreon.com <laughs> forward slash aid thompson big yeah big up the influencers um and oh i forgot to mention earlier so you get credited at the end of the show so let's quickly go through the names here of the patreons who continue to support the show and make it what it is uh <laughs> big up to anthony pingu david alex aaron chris and then ricardo silent t-rex oliver sarah paul and kerry you guys give my funny bone a funny boner uh, oh, oh. I, know. I know he really does feel that too <laughs> uh, that's that's it guys thank you so much for tuning in I'll be back on Wednesday take care of yourselves we outie